Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the Women with Disabilities Australia webinar on the Disability Royal Commission. Um, we're going to talk today about the Royal Commission and why it's important for women and girls with disability to get involved. Um, to start off with, I'm going to pass over to my colleague Libby um, to do some housekeeping. Great, thank you, Heidi. Um, welcome everybody to our webinar on the Disability Royal Commission um, presented by Women with Disabilities Australia. I'm just going to go through a little bit of housekeeping for everyone so you can best access this webinar in a way that suits you best. Um, so in the, if you look at your screen, if in the top right hand corner, there is an X symbol that is in a circle. You can use this to enlarge and minimize the full screen view. This view will highlight the speaker and the Auslan interpreter. For closed captions, we have a separate screen available that you can click on and then closed captions will be your main viewing screen. And if you want to access these closed captions in a different web screen altogether, please click on the icon to the right of your screen with an arrow on it. Also, in each of the screens, there is a small box with two arrows that this will allow you to switch um, your viewing screens. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you to um, have a bit of a try and a play with these to see what works for you best. Um, at any stage today, if there's any um, technical difficulties, um, you can access this same view. And, or you can access this same link and you can watch this later on in the day. So we, at the bottom of the screen, you'll also see that there is a speech bubble and the speech bubble allows you to submit any questions that you have today at any time during the webinar. You don't need to leave this till the, till the end. You can start submitting those now as you go. And there's also a, a down the bottom of the screen is a circle with the um, letter I in it, and that is live um, live help and assistance from um, our, our, our webinar crew today. So please feel free to utilise that. I um, would proudly like to introduce Auntie Yvonne Weldon, a Wurundjeri woman from the Metro Metropolitan Aboriginal Land Council, to do our welcome to country today. Thank you, Yvonne, and welcome. Thank you, Libby. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers. As was said, my name is Yvonne Weldon. I'm a Rudd woman from Cowra here in New South Wales. I'm from the waters of the Clare, which is also known as the Lachlan, and of the Murrumbidgee Rivers. I am the elected chairperson of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council by the Culture Authority and of the Aboriginal Land Rights Act for the land that I am on. I would like to pay my respects to all elders past and present to you and the many nations of lands that are represented represented online here today. I am on the lands of the Eora Nation. Our boundaries or our traditional owners are not defined by the hand or by the pen, but through the natural landscapes of the earth. The Eora Nation's country covers the Hawkes River in the north, the Nepean in the west, and the Georges River in the south. My people have practiced our traditions for thousands of years and endless generations. One tradition is shared in various forms across Australia is the welcome to country. It is more than just words, it is the spiritual process for honouring the ancestors' footsteps we are all walking in, continuing the practice of the generation before us to the many generations to come. My people have been a part of this land for more than 60,000 years, and we are the oldest living culture of the world. On behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, the elders, and the members, I welcome everyone to the land of the Gadigal. I acknowledge the Gadigal people and the many ancestral lands you are representing virtually today, whose spirits and ancestors will always remain with this land, our Mother Earth. The First Nations of this land are the most resilient, unique and sustainable people on the planet. For my people to survive for as long as we have, it's been through a continual practice of respect, collaboration, understanding and a willingness to come together. There are many Aboriginal warriors that have crossed this land before all of us, creating pathways before there were any. And to give respect and honour, could you all please pause for a moment to remember the many sacrifices that have been made along the way, the ones we will continue to make, and those that we should never have to. So as you connect, learn and share today, 
tomorrow and beyond. No matter what walks of life we all come from, we all need to care for each other, bringing out hidden heartaches to share and bringing us all strength together. The road travel alone is the longest, hardest road there is. I will join you and you can join me. The greatest gift you can ever give someone is your time. For so many of you, you often take on more than you realise and it can stay with you. You all have an important role in so many people's lives. This should be recognised. You are recognised and I thank you. The challenges that we all face today is not the same as it was only a few years ago. Certainly not the same as what it was in the last year. Yet it has become an accepted norm. It can bring a disadvantage that flows on from one generation to the next. The cycle doesn't only change because of policy or legislation. The battles for the endurance of adversity is the greatest evidence without the research, but it should never be gathered this way. It cannot always be about data and the bottom line. Our lived experience must be included as well. Human life and people's opportunity or lack thereof can never be rationalised to balance what will never be equal. And in these times of this pandemic, don't let the social distance make us socially absent. We must maintain physical distancing, but not creating barriers to our social connections. We need to be connected more so today now than ever. So whether it's with your work, your family or your networks, creating an inclusion and acceptance and a resilience. All of us together can bring about positive changes to multiple ger generations because we are in this together. And we can make the difference rather than having these inquiries, let's actually make sure that these traumas don't happen in the first place. So let us all draw upon my people's spirits as we continue on our journey. May my people's spirits walk with you and guide you as we strive forward for us all. Again, on behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, welcome to Gadigal Land. This always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you for that, Yvonne. Um, we are now going to pass over to the speakers um, so you can be introduced to all of our speakers today. Um, so I'll first hand over to Dr. Rhonda Galbally, um, who is our commissioner from the Disability Royal Commission. Hello, everybody. I'm Rhonda. I'm very pleased to be with you today. Thank you. Um, and next is uh, Tricia Maloney, who is the Women with Disabilities Australia president. Thanks, Heidi, and welcome everybody to the webinar. I'm really pleased to be able to support you all today. Thank you. Okay, and our third speaker um, is Susanna from Your Story. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm from Your Story Disability Legal Support. Uh, really lovely to be here with you and um, Yvonne, that was a beautiful welcome to country. Um, and we also have Kate Eastman from the Disability Royal Commission. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for having me on as well. My name's Kate Eastman and I'm council assisting the Royal Commission. Thank you, Kate. Um, our fourth speaker is also not able to um, be here in person, um, but later on you will hear from her via a pre-recorded video. Um, and her name is Kalina, and she is a member of Women with Disabilities Australia. Um, so to introduce the first speaker, we are um, going to hear from Dr. Rhonda Galbally, um, who will talk a bit about the Disability Royal Commission. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank Yvonne for such a, um, a really warm and profound welcome to country. Um, I would like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting, to the elders past and present, and to young people, including young women with a disability, who will take their place as elders in the future. In Richmond, Melbourne, where I'm joining you, the traditional owners of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And so um, thank you so much for having me on your land. 
And my name is Rhonda Galvaly, as we said before, and I'm one of the seven commissioners for the Disability Royal Commission, and I'm a woman with a disability, and I'm so delighted to speak to you today. The decision to set up this Disability Royal Commission was the product of tireless and persistent efforts by people with disabilities and their organisations who've long recognised that people with disability in this country are routinely subjected to violence, abuse, neglect and exploitation. But in particular, I would like to draw attention to the decades of work and campaigning undertaken by Women with Disabilities Australia to raise awareness of violence, abuse, neglect and exploitation of all people with disability and most particularly of women. In this regard, I'd like to recognise how pivotal your work has been in securing the establishment of the Disability Royal Commission. The voices of people with disability must be central to our work at the Commission and your tireless advocacy helps to ensure that voices of women and girls with disability are loud and clear. Royal commissions are public inquiries independent of government and they have special powers to investigate, to highlight systemic and causal issues and then to make recommendations to government about things that should change. There are several ways that we conduct our investigations and gather materials in order to ultimately make findings and recommendations. The first and most visible are public hearings. A public hearing is a formal proceeding in which witnesses give evidence under oath or affirmation about events and issues that are relevant to the Disability Royal Commission's terms of reference. Public hearings usually focus on areas of specific interest like group homes, education, employment, health care, but they are also informed by individual cases of violence, abuse, neglect and exploitation of people with disability. Public hearings are not court hearings. They are inquiries held in the public domain where witnesses provide sworn evidence. A second way to engage with the Commission is by making a submission. And as an organisation, with Women with Disabilities Australia have made several detailed, informed and very helpful submissions to the Royal Commission. And these have served as invaluable resources for the legal teams involved in planning public hearings, as well as for the policy teams in their work developing discussion papers. Individual women also make submissions and they can make as many as they would like online, in writing, by telephone, email, or as a video or audio recording. The third way to engage with the Commission is via a private session. If anyone online for this webinar wishes to contact us as an individual to tell us about their experiences, we very much want to hear from you. Private sessions are confidential. They are made to a Commissioner and can be done in person or via video conferencing or on the phone. You can request a woman commissioner for your private session. Anything you tell us in a private session that identifies you will be kept confidential. It can't be produced in response to a subpoena or disclosed under freedom of information legislation without your consent nor can it be used in evidence against you in civil or criminal proceedings in an Australian court. As a trial run, I had the privilege of conducting a week of private sessions with people mostly living in group homes. This was arranged through outreach and with the help of an advocacy organisation in South Australia. The Commission is committed to reaching people in closed, segregated settings as their voices and information are vitally important to be included in our deliberation. What you tell us in submissions or private sessions 
goes to the heart of the issues that the Royal Commission needs to look at in public hearings. For example, in part in response to your advice, we will be holding a hearing in August this year specifically concerning the health and safety of women and girls with disability. We will examine family and domestic violence. At this hearing, we want to hear about the experience of women and girls, including non-binary people. And I'm now going to hand over to Kate Eastman, seeing a council conducting that public hearing to speak further about it, because I thought you might be interested to know more about the details of that public hearing. Thank you, Commissioner Galvalee. Well, I can tell you a little bit about the hearing planned for August, and we will probably conduct a hearing over five days starting on the 16th of August, and all going well with COVID restrictions, we'd like to hold that hearing in Tasmania. This is a hearing where we want to hear directly from women and girls about their experience of violence in their homes, with their families, with friends and colleagues. And we're also interested in hearing about their experiences of violence, abuse, neglect, and exploitation in relation to women's health, particularly reproductive health. What we want to do with the hearing is see if we can provide as many opportunities for women's voices to be heard. So there's lots of different ways in which women can be involved in this public hearing. It may be, as Commissioner Galbally said, that you just want to write in your submission and a story, and we can just deal with your story in a written format. Or it may be that you want to come to the Royal Commission and sit and watch the Royal Commission or even participate as a witness at a Royal Commission to come in person and to tell your story to the Royal Commissioners. Some people like a halfway house between that and maybe what they want to do is pre-record their evidence and their stories, and we can play those stories at the Royal Commission. No one will be forced to give evidence at a Royal Commission, but I'm very keen to hear from anyone who would like to tell their story, and we will do our best to ensure that your story in whatever is the best form for you can be given. You have support of the lawyers, the councillors at the Royal Commission, but also the opportunity to access your own lawyer through your story. And so if you're concerned about giving evidence or you want any further information about what it's actually going to be like or who you can speak to, then you can let us know. Commissioner Galbally. Thank you. So, so please share your stories with us. And if you have any doubts or concerns or need any kind of support before you do so, contact us. And thank you again so much, Women with Disabilities Australia, for all your work. The Royal Commission wouldn't be here or be able to undertake our work without the continued support and input from your organisations and organisations like you. Uh, please stay in touch and please get involved. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Galbally, and also Kate Eastman for that thorough introduction. Um, and also for your very kind words about Women with Disabilities Australia. Um, we are now going to hear a little bit more about the work of Women with Disabilities Australia um, and the importance of women and girls with disability getting involved uh, from our president, Tricia Maloney. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I am working and living, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I would like to also acknowledge all the women with disabilities who have got us to where we are now. This has taken many, many years of work by many, many women. Women with Disabilities Australia is run by and for women, girls, feminine identifying and non-binary people with disabilities. We aim to improve their rights, safety and well-being. So a little bit about the history of where, where, how we've got here. In the beginning of Women with Disabilities Australia dates back to the International Year of Disabled Persons in 1981 when Disabled Peoples International held its first World Assembly in Singapore. After participating at this assembly, 13 Australians returned to Australia to set up 
an Australian branch of the Disabled Persons International. Two years later, DPI Australia was established and from the outset it was, it, it was dominated by disabled men. Only three of the 11 members of its governance structure were women and there were no mention of women or gender in the goals and objectives. Key women members were frustrated and disappointed at their unequal participation within the organisation. So in 1985, they decided to establish their own women's network within that organisation known as the National Women's Network. In the same year, the DPI held its second World Assembly in the Bahamas. Australian women representing the organisation were required to pay their own way while male represented were funded to attend the Assembly. To protest against this, Australian women joined forces with their international colleagues and demanded that women be given the right to participate equally in all national organisations of people with disabilities. And the World Council was forced to hold an emergency meeting at which they agreed to establish a standing committee on the affairs of women with disabilities. And now we have WIDA. WIDA represents more than 2 million women and girls in Australia and has affiliate organisations and networks of women with disabilities in most states and territories and is internationally recognised for our global leadership in advancing the human rights of women and girls with disabilities. So why do we need to have a specific focus on gender at the Royal Commission? Well, for a start, Article 6 of the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities prioritises women and girls with disabilities as a group warranting specific attention and additional measures. So if we just use that as a reason, it is clear that as Australia is a signatory to the Convention, it's what we need to do. There are a few issues that need to be raised. Although we as women experience many of the same forms of violence that other women experience, we experience forms of violence that are particular to our situation of social disadvantage, cultural devaluation and increased dependency on others. Poverty, race, ethnicity, religion, language and other identity states or life experience can further increase our risk of violence. Compared to other women, we experience violence at significantly higher rates, more frequently, for longer and in more ways and by more perpetrators, and yet policies, programs and services for us either do not exist, are extremely limited or simply don't include us. And our voices are very rarely heard. We experience very high rates of multiple forms of violence from a range of perpetrators, including physical, psychological and sexual violence, financial abuse, forced sterilisation and psychiatric treatment, forced contraceptive and forced abortion, Denial of health care, including exclusion from sexual and reproductive health care services, to name just a few. We have our children removed from our care at higher rates than other women or even the men with disabilities. We have our communication devices taken from us, our wheelchairs put out of, route, out of reach, our phones are removed, and we are threatened with the loss of support when we complain. Often the perpetrators are the people who are supposed to provide us with the supports we need to be independent, and they are not just family members. Women and girls with disabilities who live in institutions experience and are at a significant risk of violence. For many, violence is a day-to-day -day reality of their lives and frequently involves sustained and multiple episodes, yet we very rarely get to hear about it. For many women with disabilities in Australia, identification and recognition that violence in their lives is a problem or a crime remains a significant issue. They may have difficulties in recognising, defining and describing the violence, have limited awareness strategies on how to prevent and manage it and lack the confidence to seek help and support. Those who do seek support often find themselves in a referral roundabout with ever finding a pathway to safety. Many women with disabilities remain in, in bad situations because they have no other op option. Typically, many women with disabilities do not report the violence. We lack access to legal protection and law enforcement officials and the legal community are ill-equipped to address our concerns. 
our testimony, testimony is often not viewed as credible by the courts and we are not privy to the same information available to other women. The lack of appropriate, available, accessible and affordable services, programs and support is a major, in, major factor that increases and contributes to the violence against us. So here's our chance. Here's our chance to tell our stories to the Royal Commission. So we want to encourage all women with disabilities to come forward and tell their stories in their own way. We need to be heard. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tricia. Um, again, for that very thorough outline of our work at Women with Disabilities Australia. Um, I just wanted to mention after uh, Trisha's speech that if anyone is affected immediately by violence, you can call um, 000 or also call 1800RESPECT for um, support and counselling. Um, and we'll repeat that again a bit later. Um, next, we will hear from a Women with Disabilities Australia member, Kalina, who has spoken to two uh, Royal Commission hearings about her experiences. As I mentioned earlier, Kalina can't be here in person. Um, so with the help of the Speak Out Association of Tasmania, she has done a pre-recorded video for us uh, that we will play now. I went to the Royal Commission twice. One was about um, during COVID and one was about employment. An advocate called me and told me about the Royal Commission and asked me if I'd like to be a part of it. Before I met with the Royal Commission, I met with an advocate to talk about the hearing for the Disability Commission. I sat down with an advocate and told her my story. Of, um, during COVID, um, what they were saying on the news and on social media it was very confusing to understand what we could and couldn't do. When the Premier started um, doing lives on Facebook, it was very confusing until Speak Out started doing live at home. Um, so. I wanted to go see a friend a couple of days after we went into lockdown and um, my husband David, he rang a family friend for some advice and she took it way too seriously and said I wasn't even allowed to leave the house and she said if I was to leave the house she was going to ring the police and that I would get a fine and that um, I wasn't even allowed to see anybody or leave the house. I sort of ran down the street to a park down the street and I left my phone at home and so she couldn't ring me because she kept ringing for me. Mm. She did actually ring the police. When me and Julie went to the police station, they told us that she did. Well, the one that we spoke to at the police station, he was the sergeant and he told us the, the right rules, that I could go out of my house and go for a walk, but only for like an hour, I think it was. The advocate helped me by meeting with me several times before talking with the Disability Commission, so I felt comfortable talking to them. We got free legal advice, so I wouldn't say anything that would get, wouldn't get me into trouble. I could have got free counselling if I wanted to. Uh, there are different ways you can tell your story to the Commission. You can tell it live, or a pre-recorded video, or on the phone, or you can write a letter, or record it through your phone. Um, when I finally started the hearing, the lawyer I had been speaking to said that the hearing will start soon. And when I was let into the hearing, there was all these different people all over the screen. When the hearing started, the lawyer asked me to tell my story. I felt 
a little nervous but once I got talking I was okay. The story I told about employment the second time I went to the Royal Commission. Um, I met on Skype with Epic Employment during COVID when we were in lockdown about getting a new job. And after the lockdown, I got a job at Kmart. Uh, the people are very friendly and I love it because it feels like a real job. Because my other job just didn't feel like a real job. So the Royal Commission wants to hear about good stories so they can tell the government about good things that are happening with people with intellectual disability. I told my story to the Royal Commission because I want the government to hear people's stories with intellectual disability because there are lots of people with intellectual disabilities who aren't being listened to and they have rights to be listened to. I hope that the government will start listening to people with disability because um, we all matter. I would recommend talking to the Royal Commission. It may seem scary at first but once you start talking to them it's not that bad. Um, thank you to Kalina and also uh, the Speak Out Association of Tasmania for preparing that video for us. Um, I think it was a really good example of what we've been talking about um, in terms of people telling their story. Um, so lastly, um, but definitely not least, we'll pass over to Susanna O'Reilly from the Your Story Disability Support Service. Um, to expand a bit more on the different supports you can access if you'd like to talk to the Royal Commission. Thanks Heidi. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we each meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present um, and in particular pay my respects and acknowledge the strength and resilience um, of First Nation women who are survivors of violence. Um, I'm going to play a short video to start with um, to explain a little bit more about your story, disability legal support. Sometimes people with a disability have been hurt, treated badly, refused help, or taken advantage of. This is wrong. And the Disability Royal Commission has been set up to look at this. Your story, disability legal support is a free legal service. We are independent from the Royal Commission. We can answer your questions about sharing your story with the Royal Commission, like Sometimes, people with a disability have been hurt, treated badly, refused help, or taken advantage of. This is wrong, and the Disability Royal Commission has been set up to look at this. Your Story Disability Legal Support is a free legal service. We are independent from the Royal Commission. We can answer your questions about sharing your story with the Royal Commission, like How can I share my story? How can I keep my story private? Can I name the person or organisation that hurt me? I signed this legal document which says I can't talk about what happened. What does that mean? Will I lose my job if I share what I saw at work? We can provide legal support so you can safely share your story. We give legal support in a way that works for you. 
Our lawyers won't tell anyone what you have told them, unless you agree. For free legal support, call our free number 1800 1800 or visit our website www.yourstorydisabilitylegal.org.au. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to reinforce, um, I think, the points made by Tricia and um, Commissioner Galbally about the importance um, of women taking part in the Disability Royal Commission and the upcoming um, public hearing about the health and safety um, of women and girls. Um, my background before the Your Story role was working in domestic violence and before that um, in care and protection. So I'm really keenly aware of um, many of the issues and uh, injustices that women with disability can experience in those areas. Um, I'd also commend to you the Disability Royal Commission's published an issues paper in relation to the health and safety of women um, that I think really highlights uh, the issues in this area and the importance um, of this issue. Uh, <clears throat> it talks to many of the points that Tricia raised, but um, some around the complex and compounding impacts of family violence on women with disability, um, because sometimes uh, the perpetrator can also be a carer and because women uh, can experience a distinct forms of controlling and coercive behaviour. So things like uh, medication and personal care and food and water being withheld or being isolated from supports and services, um, including legal services um, or services to be able to escape violence. Um, I think the issues paper also makes a really salient point around um, that some women acquire their disability as a result of their experience of uh, family violence with 40% of survivors who were hospitalised due to family violence um, having a sustained brain injury. Um, so I would um, really uh, commend the importance of this topic and also uh, the commission and having the value of your lived experiences. Um, and in relation to that, the other uh, point I wanted to make in terms of why you might uh, be interested in making a submission to the Royal Commission. So the feedback that we get from some of our clients um, is that uh, it can be a difficult experience, but that it can also be an empowering experience. Um, so it's an opportunity to be an advocate for yourself and also for other women and an opportunity to have um, your experience acknowledged, uh, heard and respected. And I suppose um, that can be quite empowering and healing, particularly because it can be so different to the experiences of violence and abuse and some of the systems that surround uh, those issues. Um, and finally, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, a de-identified uh, case that we had, which I think uh, really highlights the importance of this area and also some of the issues that uh, you might want to get some advice about and some of the services that we can offer. Uh, so this is de-identified and I've changed some of the details, but I'm just going to talk a little bit um, about a client I'll call Sarah. Uh, so Sarah has a psychosocial um, disability and her husband um, is her carer and has been violent towards her throughout her relationship. On one of these occasions, Sarah defends herself um, and he calls the police and um, the police apply for an AVO against Sarah. Um, Sarah agrees to the AVO, um, not fully understanding the legal implications of it at the time and also feeling quite overwhelmed by the process, um, in part because of her disability, but also in part because the process can be quite overwhelming and confusing. Um, and is not confident to tell the police about what really happened to her. Um, the AVO stops Sarah seeing her children and then her husband initiates family law proceedings. Uh, so Sarah approached us really wanting to tell her story to the Disability Royal Commission. Um, she wanted it to be public and to stop this happening to other people, but she also um, was worried about her ex finding out. Um, she also had some questions around um, what she could share about her children's experiences and also um, whether she could provide information in relation to her family law proceedings. So in this uh, case, we advised Sarah about her different options um, and she chose to do a public but anonymous submission. So the core of her experience could still be uh, read by the public 
um, but in a way that her partner was very unlikely to ever find out about um, if it was uh, as part of the Commission's family re final report. We also assisted Sarah to get some additional legal protections from the Royal Commission. So if her partner did ever find out that she'd made the submission and tried to uh, take any retribution or harm her, um, his actions would be illegal. And we also gave us some advice about Section 121 of the Family Law Act, which can um, prohibit people from uh, publicising information about family law proceedings. Uh, but we assisted Sarah to make her submission in a general way um, that didn't identify uh, her children or her partner or her family law case, but still um, facilitated her to be able to uh, share her experience and share her views and her comments on what she'd been through um, through the AVO and family law systems. And then we were also able to advise Sarah in relation uh, to some of her AVO and family law issues as well. Um, the other thing that I'd like to add is that we um, are a partnership um, of legal aid commissions and Aboriginal legal services. So for First Nations women, um, you can receive a service from an Aboriginal community controlled service and speak to an Aboriginal staff member. Um, and we can uh, help you connect uh, will either provide assistance with you for your legal issue and or connect you with anything else that you may need, as well as the counselling that runs alongside the Royal Commission. Um, so if you are interested um, or thinking about sharing your story, uh, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us on 1800 77 1800 or also through our website um, at yourstorydisabilitylegal.org.au. Thanks, Heidi. Um, thank you, um, we're now going to move to questions with all of the panel. So um, we'll go to the first question um, and someone has asked about, um, well, first they have spoken about their experiences of uh, violence and abuse in the past and how they've developed um, physical and cognitive um disabilities as a result of that um they've also said that they would like to speak at the hearing in tasmania in august um so i just wondered if the panelists could speak a bit about where um this person should first go for support to do that or where they should contact if they would like to speak at that hearing I think Kate would be good to answer that. All right, so thank you for that question. Uh, in terms of who can speak at the hearing in August, we have to undertake a process of talking to a lot of people and I can't guarantee that everybody who might want to speak in person and giving their evidence live will be able to do so. So can I say that at the beginning? But if people are interested in telling their story, and want to speak either in person at the Royal Commission or pre-record their evidence like Kalina Boss did, she talked about that earlier, then if they can contact us at the Royal Commission. So there's a couple of ways to contact us. They can ring the Royal Commission, send an email or use the other um, ways that the Royal Commission website sets out to contact us. When they contact us, say that they would like to be involved or give evidence at the hearing in August and ask uh, them their contact details to be given to me and to the lawyers that I work with at the Royal Commission and then steps to make contact. But they may also want to speak to your story and to get some advice before coming directly to the Royal Commission from your story about the matters that Susanna's spoken about today. So either way is absolutely fine. And it's important that however you come to the Royal Commission, that you come feeling comfortable and safe and that you're going to get the information that you need. So uh, Susanna, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna add to that. Thanks um, for that, Kate. Um, we can talk through different options for sharing your story and we can also support people to make that request um, to the Commission as well. And don't forget pri a private session 
um, can also be very valuable. And sometimes um, people in private sessions say they'd like to be public and we let um, the solicitor um, for the commission know and we let Kate know. And, and the reverse also, Commissioner Galbally, we've had some people who have come and said to us they would like to give evidence at a hearing, but as we prepare and it gets closer to the hearing, they're not so comfortable anymore and it's often the option of a private session can be very helpful as well. So as I said earlier, no one has to be forced to participate in a public hearing if they're uncomfortable doing so and we've got other backup options uh, instead of the hearing and a private session is a really important way of sharing your story with the Royal Commission. Okay, thank you for that. I think that was a really helpful question. Um, our Another question, which is, I suppose, quite related, is about what the outcomes will be of the um, hearing into women and girls with disability. So, um, I assume we can't provide specific answers, um, but I suppose if there will be um, a summary of what people said and things like that, um, and also where people can access that. Okay. Do you want me to take that question as well? Yes. So when we hold a public hearing and we hear what everybody wishes to tell us, and sometimes we've got written statements and reports and other material as well. The job of council assisting is to prepare what we call a submission at the end of the public hearing. And we try to pick everybody's story up together and put it all in writing with a report that we make our submissions to the commissioners. And we look at all of the evidence in everybody's story and we also look at what recommendations or ideas or suggestions for change that witnesses have. And we might suggest to the Royal Commissioners that the Royal Commissioners could make a recommendation to government about certain changes, either to the law, to the way in which people treat each other, to changes in practices and policies. So at the end of the hearing, we do the work in summarising the evidence, picking up the suggestions and making some recommendations for the Royal Commissioners to consider. The Royal Commissioners then uh, look at, at the material from uh, us as the council assisting, but also other people who may want to also make submissions about what should the Royal Commissioners do. Once the Royal Commissioners have looked at all of that material, the Royal Commissioners prepare their own report called a hearing report. And when that becomes public, a copy of the hearing report, and usually, but not always, the submissions made by council assisting or submissions made by other people will be available on the Royal Commission's website. So, so far, the commissioners have put hearing reports for our public hearings two, three, four, five, and public hearing six reports about to come out. So if anyone is interested in the outcomes of the hearings, they can have a look at some of the reports that we've done for previous hearings to get a bit of an idea about what we're doing. So I hope that answers the question, Heidi. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess we'll move to another question. Um, so someone else has asked, about what mental health support they can get, um, I guess, which is quite relevant to if someone is uh, telling their story and it brings up um, certain issues for them, um, what, who specifically they should go to. Um, yeah. Can I do a quick answer on that and then hand to Commissioner Galbley and to Susanna? So the first thing is that the approach we try to take in the Royal Commission is what we call a trauma-informed approach, which means that we do not wish to cause any harm or any further harm to any person who participates with the Royal Commission. And we uh, adopt an approach of engaging with our witnesses that it is trauma-informed. So we're very aware about the impact of mental health issues and the impact of trauma on anybody who participates in the Royal Commission. 
We have a team of expert counsellors who've got a lot of experience in this area. And for every witness who participates in the Royal Commission, we also have a counsellor who will be involved in preparing for the hearing. And the counsellor will be there for whenever the witness wants to speak, not just while they're talking to us as the lawyers, but if they want to have a chat about anything or talk, we have that support. So I might hand to Commissioner Galbley because Commissioner Galbley's had a lot of experience with our counsellors and Susanna might also have some important points on this issue as well. Yes, I just wanted to add that they're also available for private sessions and are really, you know, terrific and contact before, during and after and follow up. So um, I hope that, you know, it's really a very important question. And I might just add in, um, if you get in contact with your story, we can also refer you to free counselling. Um, and if we're doing some work with you um, in terms of uh, thinking through if you might want to participate in the Royal Commission and how, we also have a social worker that can support you um, through that process. Um, and I just wanted to add in, Heidi, uh, sorry, I should have um, added this in relation to um, the first question. Um, if she does want to get any legal advice around um, that injury or entitlement to victim support and things like that, uh, please do get in contact uh, with us in relation to um, that issue and personal injury and things like that. So we can also assist, um, like I said, with any kind of legal issues that might flow from somebody's experience that they want to share with the Disability Royal Commission. Yeah, thank you. Um, so our next question is about uh, what advice would you give to someone who is supporting a friend or family member who is considering telling their story? Um, I'd just like to say that, th that, number one, I'm assuming the friend or family member is encouraging the person to come forward and I think that's a really important thing. We just absolutely need to hear from um, people and, and it's often the people um, who are really reticent or are in situations where it's really difficult to come forward. And, you know, the informal support of friends and family and, and um, others to come forward is really invaluable. And then there's the comprehensive um, support from your story on the legal and counselling side, but also from the Commission itself when you come into um, uh, private sessions or even being witnesses in public hearing. But I think getting that first step, um, the importance of the informal networks is really, um, you know, really important. Anyone else want to have a go? Okay, Katie, if um, a family or friend wants to contact the Royal Commission, then they're very welcome to do so. And if people feel that they are comfortable giving their evidence with their family member or their friend with them as they give their evidence, that's absolutely fine. Yes. We've done that in a few of our hearings and it's worked really well or even giving evidence together. So telling the story together, that's fine. We can certainly accommodate those types of arrangements. Yes, I've done numbers of private sessions where um, the family member or the informal support has been there and it's been really great. I just agree with the Commissioner and Senior Council's comments about the importance of um, the support of family, friends. Um, I'm sure that that may be a situation that many of your members um, are in and I think it's uh, really vitally important. Um, the only other thing I'd add is, um, so if there are uh, family, friends, carers, supporters, advocates of people with disability, your story disability legal support also provides uh, legal services um, to those people as well and that they are also able to um, take part in the Disability Royal Commission in relation to their experiences as well. 
Yes, I think that last point is very important because some of the really um, great in, vital information actually comes from advocates and um, family members and others who have observed things in, and from support workers. So we would really encourage them to come forward too. Uh, thank you, everyone. I think that was um, very helpful. So we have time for maybe one more quick question. Um, so I might go to, there's a question about um, all of the, sorry, there, there have been some quite uh, concerning stories in the media lately about violence and abuse towards women and girls with disability. Um, and this person has asked, what if um, they are not sure whether their story is sort of bad enough or whether their experience um, really constitutes violence, what should they do? Can I come in there and just say that there is no competition for whose who's form of violence is worse than anybody else's? If you're traumatised by an action, that's violence. And it, we don't, we shouldn't rely on or their story is worse than mine. None of us should be experiencing violence. All of us have the right to live free from violence and your story is as important as anybody else's. Yes, can I also um, add that the issue of neglect when your own development's been neglected and your own opportunities have been um, really you know, dampened down so you haven't had any. That's also really important. That's And that's violence, abuse, neglect and exploitation. And they're often cumulative. They build up over a period of time. So it's very important we hear from you about, you know, micro abuse and violence, but also neglect as well. Yeah, I would add to that. When I talk about violence, I take a broad view of that. So it can also include emotional abuse and controlling behaviour, which can have a, a very, very significant um, impact on people. Um, and I, I think the other thing I would add is that the Commission's also really interested in hearing about um, examples of best practice or ideas that you have about how to improve things. So it doesn't necessarily need to be um, a negative experience, I think, particularly in this area, if there's things that are working or ideas that people have, I think it's really important that that's included as part of the commission as well. Good point. Would you like to add anything to that, Kate? No, I just agree uh, with everyone. And I can say every person's story is important. And to have the opportunity to tell the story in the way that you want and the matters that you want to talk about, that's what the Royal Commission is there to do. Great, thank you. Um, that's about all we have time for. And that was, um, I think, a good question to finish up on um, because that is kind of our message as well. We want to hear everybody's stories. Um, so just to finish, I will just say that we have provided links to um, the Women with Disabilities Australia, the Royal Commission and the Your Story Support websites, um, which is just below this panel and will also show on the final slide. Um, and if you have been affected uh, by violence or abuse in any way, you can also contact 1800 Respect for support and counselling and referrals. Um, and that is on 1800 737 732, um, which we have also provided on the Weirder Women with Disabilities Australia website via the next link. So thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you so much to our panellists um, for all of your presentations. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks, thank everybody. You.